Hello and welcome back to the CLA, specifically the CLA Shooting Brake. Now, this is a car that we've spent a lot of time with on this channel and if you remember a few videos back, we did a video on the CLA Coupe and the Shooting Brake and I spent most of my time in the Shooting Brake. Why is that? Well, it was just because I like it. It's a car that I've got a huge soft spot for. I always look forward to seeing one, always look forward to driving one as well. So you may be wondering, why are we looking at the CLA again? A little while ago, I spent a bit of time with a pair of cars and the two of them got me thinking. One of them was a CLA shooting brake. The other car being the GLB, which I'm now in. The magic of editing. Anyway, you could be forgiven for thinking that these are two totally different cars. One's an SUV, one is a shooting brake estate. They couldn't be more different. Well, yes, to a point, but I actually think they're a lot more similar than that. You could actually call them the anti-normal compact cars. Allow me to explain. Compact cars are great. I always tend to prefer cars in this class because they're more enjoyable to sling along the narrow roads that surround where I live. Additionally, I never tend to carry too many passengers or things, so objectively, this is the right class of car for me. So why am I not doing another video on this, the A-Class? It is, after all, the core of the compact car range. The Mercedes-Benz compact car range has grown and the variety of cars, names, shapes and body styles has expanded over the last few years too. There's hatchbacks, saloons, MPVs, SUVs, as well as a four-door coupe and a shooting brake estate from the CLA. Now the CLA has always been my pick of the compact car range. I love the way it drives, but the shooting brake specifically, there's just something about the way that the lines from the four-door coupe have molded and transformed it into one of the best looking estates on the market. A shooting brake today is a type of estate car with a greater focus on style and design. And as with a lot of automotive terms that we hear today, other than Le Mans prototype and hypercar obviously, the name goes back to the days of horse-drawn carriages, where a shooting brake was a sleek carriage designed to be taken on hunts with room for rifles, dogs, pheasants, and so on. Now, I'll admit, I can fit more washing machines in the boot of a regular estate car, but I can also fit more washing machines in the back of a van than I can in an estate, and I can fit a few vans inside a Boeing 747 cargo plane, so that point is pretty much irrelevant to me. It's got plenty of room for all of the essentials that I need. I usually travel quite light, and if you do need a bit more load space, then the second row of seats can be folded down. The CLA is all about design. It is sure to turn heads wherever you take it with its flowing lines. I especially like the window line on the shooting brake, how it gently curves down and reaches a narrow point at the rear. And speaking of glass, the windows are frameless. This is the correct type of window, but perhaps my favorite design feature is the way that the brake lights actually mirror the shape of the trim that surrounds the exhaust tips. Once you see this, you won't be able to unsee it. It's a nice touch. But the character line running from front to rear rises very gently, goes through the wheel arch and then continues at the back of the car. And whilst we're here, I like this little lip on the boot lid too. And the door mirrors. I like the door mirrors. Even the diamond pins in the grille, they're quite pretty as well. Okay, we might be getting a bit carried away here, but I think you can tell I'm a big fan of the design of this car. With the second generation CLA, it was all changed with a brand new chassis, family of engines, gearboxes and powertrain options, as well as a brand new cabin. Even the window switches are new for this generation. Separating it from the A-Class on which it's based, the cabin itself is slightly wider and the full leather interior can be had in a variety of colours at no additional cost. To my senses, the cabin of the CLA is the quietest in the compact car family, with the refinement matching up beautifully with this stunning design that we have surrounding us, and I think actually being a class above what you would expect from a compact car. Then there's the way it drives. If I get the chance to have one of these for a couple of days, I do everything I can to avoid giving the keys back to my colleagues. However, there is another car in the compact range which I do have a big soft spot for. And that is why we're here. A few weeks ago, I inadvertently did the twin test between these two cars when my own one needed a little bit of TLC. I couldn't help but draw comparisons between the two and wanted to get them together for a head-to-head. -head. Let's get into it. 
cruising at high speeds is just a doddle for the CLA 200. That 1.3 liter engine just gently hums away in the background. Now, a lot of people think that an engine with a capacity that small is going to be gutless, but believe me, it's not. You don't need to thrash it in order to get going. Peak torque comes in quite low down in the rev range, but if you do need to get moving a little bit quicker, stab of right foot and it drops four ratios in less time than you can say, well, four ratios. This seven speed twin clutch automatic gearbox is lightning fast. Very smooth though, too. The car's aerodynamic design means it just slices through the air with ease. That means the engine doesn't need to work overtime to pull it along, resulting in high efficiency. Refinement is super high as well, genuinely above where you would expect a car in this class to be. And with this cabin, it is a lovely place to watch the world go by. But I keep on coming back to this car as it's a great driver's car, so let's explore that. Now this is a car which is uh, its always a joy to be behind the wheel of a CLA on a good stretch of road. The track being two inches wider just means you've got so much grip, so much stability going through corners, it feels planted. The steering to my senses, it's the best of the compact car range as well. Nice and direct, very pointy, there's a lot of confidence that the steering gives you. And again, that lightning fast seven speed box does not miss a beat, very quick to react, very quick to drop into the gear that you ask for it. As an all-rounder in a compact shell, for the type of driving that I do and the type of driving that I enjoy, the CLA is pretty hard to beat. Now, I know I never carry enough stuff to warrant having a estate or a shooting brake. I don't even carry enough people to warrant having a second row of seats, but I just like this car. Anyway, my colleagues decided that they wanted their car back, and later on that day, I picked up the keys to a GLB. It was hopping back into one of these that gave me the idea for this test. About halfway home I realised that the GLB and the CLA shooting brake are actually both very similar, if not in their body styles, but in the way that they both attack the question of how do you make a distinctive, stylish, family compact car. Before the model made its debut, we were told that we'd be getting a sort of mini G-Wagon to sit in the compact car range with room for up to seven people, and the GLB is the result. I think it's clear to see where this car took its inspiration from with the big glass surfaces, steeply raked windscreen, and these nice, bold, tall, upright body panels that just make it stand out. It's a unique car, and my favorite bit about the design actually is the way that the window line just kicks up towards the back of the car. This not only shows off the car's shoulder line very nicely, but emphasizes the flaring over the rear wheel arches. It's not just a good looking design, it's a clever one as well. So when you open the door, the lower trim will open with it. So you don't get road grime on your trousers as you're hopping into the car. Keeps the sills quite clean as well, I've found. The interior design is what we're used to from the Mercedes-Benz compact car range at the moment, and I think that's a good thing. It is a great looking cabin. Ergonomically, it is fantastic. Everything is well within easy reach. There is plenty of space on the front row, loads of room on the second row. There's room for people to sit behind my own driving position as well, which is in the back of the car. And of course, there is a third row of seats. These seats pop up from the boot floor, Gaining access to these is made easy thanks to the sliding second row of seats being able to fold up and out of the way. I like it. There's just something about the GLB that I like, and trying to put a finger on why I have such a soft spot for this car would be like trying to explain why I prefer calzone to pizza. I just do. Heading along the same stretch of motorway, the engine is barely even turning. It's not even doing 1700 rpm at 70 miles an hour in eighth gear it is so quiet it's just whispering in the background almost electric car levels of drivetrain refinement the glb i took was a 220d formatic and this is my personal pick of the range for this car not just because i like a high powered diesel especially in a small car but it just feels so well suited to the character of the car great efficiency effortless performance and quick to get up to speed when you need it. So given that the GLB is 300 kilos heavier as tested than the CLA, and it's tall driving position and raised ride height, you may think 
that this car feels as out of place as a penguin on the Costa del Sol in August when you show it a twisty section of road. But no, if anything, the car feels right at home. And for an SUV, well, it drives well. It drives really well. Nice, flat, planted. I don't think I've ever seen the traction control light coming up, no matter how hard I press on in a GLB. It just enjoys it. It doesn't throw its hands up in protest. It wants to press on. It's hugely rewarding and entertaining to shuffle a GLB along a twisty road, but I think it really comes into its own when cruising between towns. The ride for one is exceptionally well judged, very comfortable. It soaks up the potholes and crevices of the roads around where I live with ease. Now, yes, okay, the GLB does verge on being a medium-sized car, but it doesn't feel big. It's not as wide as a bus, and positioning the car is made easy thanks to the high driving position, great view of the world around you, thanks to all the big glass surfaces everywhere, but also the bonnet, nice and flat, and the power domes help you to keep the car in the right spot on the road. Refinement is great as well, and there's a lot less wind noise than you may expect, even though the windscreen is so steeply raked, you might think that you'd get a lot of noise pushing against what is almost basically a flat surface, but this isn't the case. Turn up the radio, turn up whatever it is that you unwind to on the way to or from work, you might hear it. Choosing between these two cars is a lot harder than you may think. Both of these cars can carry people and luggage in a quiet, safe, serene bubble, but visually they couldn't be coming at the question of how to make a distinctive compact family car from more opposing angles. Both have their own star qualities, both have their own unique characteristics, and I have soft spots for both of these models for two very different sets of reasons. Both these cars come to the UK exclusively as AMG line models with a great standard equipment offering. You can add on option packages if you like. My pick of the range for the GLB is the 220D Formatic, and for the CLA I'm torn between the 200 Petrol and the 250E Plug-in Hybrid. Prices for these models are on screen now. If you'd like some more information, check out the brochures in the description. These two cars make really compelling cases for themselves, and they are great examples of what a compact car can be, hence why I call them the anti-normal compact cars. They have these unique characters, and for that, I adore them both. But which one would I take back today? The GLB just has this distinctive shape, styling, character. I love the way it drives as well. In terms of SUVs, it is one of these and the EQC that I enjoy on twisting sections of road most. But the CLA shooting brake, well, it was this exact car that was sitting on the drive a few weeks ago, soaking up the sun, and a young kid walked past, pointed at the car and said, wow, I love that car. And in that moment, I immediately became confident that there's a new generation of petrol heads on the way, but also the design now, good design, can still capture the mind and spark the imagination, just as it did for me years ago, flicking through stacks and stacks of brochures and marveling at brilliantly sculpted metal. I think you know which one I would take. If you'd like to find out more about these two models, then take a look at the rest of the videos on our channel. We featured both of these cars before. Make sure to head over to our website to take a look at our stock, build your deal for your approved used car, and arrange a test drive for one of these two models. And also, make sure to subscribe to our channel too, so that you don't miss a thing. Thank you for watching this video. I really do hope that you have enjoyed it. The twin test is a new format for us, something slightly different. Let us know if you would like to see more videos like this. We do have a few ideas for cars that we can put together. Anyway, we'll see you again in the next one.